So this is part three of the Earth Materials and Systems tutorial series. Objective two was quite long because we had several different types of processes to discuss, and we also had to talk about the energy behind them. Now, these processes were mostly review of things we've learned in other content assessments for the year. And so in a way, uh, that's, that's why it was long, because we had to review a lot. But on this one, we're going to be talking about how those processes change the actual materials the Earth is made of through chemical and physical changes. Specifically, we're going to talk about the rock cycle a lot here. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to talk about is what is a chemical or physical change? So chemical changes are changes that alter the composition of matter, what it's made of. New arrangements of atoms, chemical reactions actually take place. You have something there that's a new chemical that wasn't there before. So you can have two chemicals making up a new one, one chemical splitting up in two, or different chemicals reacting to each other to form completely new chemicals also. So examples of that is like rusting, combustion, when you cook, or in the case of the earth, when rocks are broken down by acid rain or when new minerals form in volcanoes, these will all be examples of chemical changes associated with the earth. Physical changes are changes that do not alter the composition of matter. You still have the same physical substance, the same chemical thing also, but they may change the way they appear or act, right? So, for example, if you have ice, liquid, or gas, so water evaporating, water cond doing condensation, water freezing, changes in the state of matter during the water cycle, those would be examples of physical changes. With rocks, when a rock melts or cools during the process of geology, that's an example of that. Or when a rock is broken down by physical weathering or erosion or, co or compacted on top of another rock to form new rock. These are all examples of physical changes. Here's another uh, set of uh, examples to help you really drive this across. So again, melting ice, shredding of paper, cutting something like chopping the wood or mixing something. All of those are examples of changes that do not change the chemical identity of the matter and therefore physical. But changes that change the, what the chemical is, a reaction actually occur, new products are formed, bonds are broken, burning, rotting, uh, uh, actual reactions between uh, baking soda or vinegar, fireworks, uh, rust will be examples of those. Let's see this in action on the actual earth by talking about the rock cycle. All right. So here's the rock cycle. You have three major types of rocks. You got igneous rock, which is rock that forms from volcanoes. You have sedimentary rock, which is rock that's formed from compacting, compaction, and sedimentation. We talked about that in the last video, which is when rocks kind of get squeezed together or glued together by chemicals or, or basically, basically sediments put together into rock. Then you have metamorphic rock, which is rock of either of those kinds changed by heat or pressure due to uh, processes that like plate tectonics, uplift, uh, volcanic action, uh, subsidence, earthquakes. So when rocks crack under pressure or change under heat or bend under pressure, you're going to get metamorphic rock. Now, all rocks types can melt, right? Now, typically, you're not going to see a lot of sedimentary rock melting straight away because if it's near, near a volcano, it will bend first and become metamorphic rock. And that's why you don't really have a sedimentary rock going straight to melting. It is possible, but it's very unlikely that it tends to happen. But either igneous rocks or metamorphic rock can melt to form a lava again. There one place the sedimentary rock does melt is when the crust subducts underneath another, right? And then it melts as it hits the mantle. So I guess uh, sedimentary rock can melt as well. There's no arrow here going from sedimentary rock to melting, but it should be, right? So either way, way before that rock subducts and melts, it's going to be squeezed and heated. And so it's even, even then it still will become metamorphic rock first. So I can see why they didn't put that on the drawing. But either way, those are the three main kinds of rocks, and you should have learned that before, instead of great. But then, uh, let's talk about the process that changed them, right? So if when lava cools, you get igneous rock. When igneous rock melts, you get lava again. When metamorphic rock melts, you get lava, right? Um, and you, if you have igneous rock that undergoes pressure or heating due to things like uplift, subsidence, plate tectonics, volcanic action, that's going to cause it to become metamorphic rock. Same with sedimentary rock. If the igneous rock or sedimentary rock is broken down by erosion and weathering, you get back into sediments. And then if those sediments are put together, by the way, sedimentary rock can be broken down too, back into sediments. 
But if then those sediments actually get deposited, cemented, and compacted, you form sedimentary rock again. So that is basically the rock cycle. Rocks can change format, format right? Now, how, how do you see the chemical and physical changes in this? So let's talk about that. So when you have deposition and compaction, right, these are physical processes by which sediments are moved, placed somewhere, and then squeezed together to force sedimentary rock. Cementation has to do with a chemical process where chemicals glue minerals to each other to help form a sedimentary rock. So there's a chemical process right there. When a rock melts to form lava, whether it melts from metamorphic rock, igneous rock, or sedimentary rock, that is a physical process of melting. When new minerals form in volcanoes by chemicals reacting to each other in the heat of the lava, that's a chemical process. When lava cools to form rock, that's a physical process. When erosion and weathering of rock breaks the rock into sediments, it can be either physical or chemical. Uh, something like acid rain, that would definitely be a chemical process. Uh, but something like wind and water bashing against the rock, that's going to be uh, physical. When heat and pressure are applied to rocks due to plate tectonics, subsidence, uplift, and the rocks change to metamorphic, that's also a physical change. So as you can see, the processes that change the earth are examples of physical or chemical changes. Right? And so... Uh, that's essentially what the core of the objective three is. But I do want to remind you that if there's see a question about the formation of new minerals, for the most for the most of the time, you're talking about minerals form in volcanoes. It is volcanoes which put new minerals into the crust. So watch out for that if you see a question about that. On the next video, we're going to finish this up by talking about how long it takes for these processes to change the earth. I'll see you guys then.